Well, welcome to Christian Answers. This is Pastor Jeff Short. Glad to have you along for another discussion of a contemporary current topic. We try to address the topics from a Christian biblical worldview, and that's not always easy because the Bible does not speak always about everything, but it does speak a lot about a lot of things. And so it's a big book. You know, from Genesis to Revelation, there's a lot of revelation from God. There's a lot of good content that we have from God Almighty to help us navigate our lives and in the world around us. And so we need to know what God is telling us, and we need to apply the principles of what he's telling us. He's giving us truth that we probably could not have found on our own. There are some truths in the Bible for example, like the existence of God, that you can know on your own through looking at nature and considering the conscience of of your own heart and so forth. You You can get a clue that there's a God, but the Bible tells a lot more about that clue. And so you, while technically, yes, you can know that there is a God and there's one God uh, through nature and through uh, without the Bible, it certainly helps to have the content of the one God explained in the Bible. And that's why we have revelation. God gives us revelation to give us uh, true and accurate uh, information that we probably couldn't understand on our own or couldn't put together on our own using just our reason and our own observation and experience. Well, today what I want to talk about is a topic that I talked about before uh, a couple years ago, about a year ago, or even two years ago, and that is censorship in big tech. Um, We're talking about outright, overt, eliminating certain topics, eliminating certain words, phrases, eliminating certain uh, conversations entirely by big tech companies, and namely, in this instance, Google, who owns YouTube. I went through a series of YouTube video program removals uh, two years ago and then a year ago, and they were involving different topics entirely. There was one uh, video, actually two videos that were removed by YouTube dealing with the COVID-19 vaccine. And they had a very picky, uh, petty policy that you could not depart from the CDC narrative about vaccine safety. You could not depart from Dr. Fauci's party line. You could not depart from the government officially narrative about COVID-19 vaccines. You could not talk about uh, therapeutics that were not okayed by the CDC. It was very totalitarian. It was very uh, communistic, the way the old Stalin and Lenin communism ran in the Soviet Union, where you just couldn't say certain things and you couldn't talk about certain topics or else they would basically erase you. Well, that's what YouTube was doing all throughout 2020 and 2021. And then they started easing up on that kind of censorship and restriction and heavy controlling of the content on what you could say and talk about and have conversation about. They eased up and everybody was a little bit uh, shocked, but they were happy that I was very pleasantly pleased that you could start talking about whatever you wanted to talk about, which is the way it should be. You should be able to talk about whatever topic, uh, if, in, unless it's, of course, something illegal, or if it's something uh, pornographic, or if it's something violent, if you're trying to incite violence and all kinds of things like that. Yeah, there are certain laws against yelling fire in a crowded theater, and there are certain laws, I'm sure, against um, fomenting revolution against your uh, government and all kinds of different things. Although it's really strange that 
uh, YouTube doesn't seem to have a problem with um, uh, communism and talking about communism and the goals of communism and they don't have a problem uh, in some instances with uh, uh, Islamic uh, terrorists talking about uh, terrorism and all kinds of other things. But if you talk about the COVID-19 vaccine in the wrong way, they will take down your video and say that you're peddling misinformation. So I dealt with that uh, a couple years ago when they were really hot and heavy into censorship and even taking down uh, doctors and the medical society's discussion of these things because they didn't follow the CDC guidelines and uh, mimic the Dr. Fauci party line word for word. Okay, so we put up with that. And then uh, I had a video taken down <clears throat> that was dealing with the 2020 elections. And again, <clears throat> the totalitarian censors and control freaks decided that you couldn't talk about the 2020 elections unless you were talking about how it was one of the most safe and secure elections in history of the United States. Unless you, again, if you started um, talking about anything that deviated from the mainstream media narrative about election integrity and and uh, it, unless you started talking about uh, uh, um, how bad these uh, people are who uh, question the election and all this kind of stuff, your videos are removed. And so in other words, you can't talk about the 2020 elections in a certain way um, and, and, and go down certain avenues in that discussion or else your videos are taken down. So again, there's this narrative, this very rigid and uh, very well-defined narrative that if you don't fit into that narrative on virus uh, COVID-19 vaccines or the 2020 ele presidential elections, you will be censored. You will be removed. You will be erased. And if you persist in, in talking about these forbidden topics on the internet, you, your whole channel will be taken down and you will be canceled. So that's part of the cancel culture. That's, that's feeding into the cancel culture. And why does YouTube, uh, Google, that parent company, why do they do that? Why does Amazon do that? Amazon.com do that? Why does Twitter do that? Instagram do that? Facebook, why are they censoring people from having conversations in a free society. And they always have their reasons. They always have their rationales, you know. Uh, for example, in the 2020 election, they censored thousands and thousands, maybe even millions of videos and discussions and conversations about the 2020 election. Why? Because it questioned election integrity. That's the rationale. And so evidently, um, Google doesn't like people questioning uh, elections in the United States, as long as it's, uh, they're not questioning their candidate. And we all know that the big tech companies are basically all pushing for the liberal Democratic Party line. They're all pushing for the Democratic candidates, the uh, socialist-leaning uh, radical left. They're all pushing uh, against the Republican candidates and Republican Party and conservatism. We all know that the biases are there. And so it's very convenient for them to say, well, we're just uh, fortifying election integrity by removing misinformation about the 2020 election. When all they're really doing is just promoting a certain political ideology and narrative. That's what they're doing. And so they're willing to depart from a free speech America, they're willing to step in and say, well, we like free speech just as long as we're free to speak. But if you are a conservative Christian and you are talking in ways that we don't like, you don't get your free speech. Free speech is free as long as it's what we want you to say. So these big tech companies uh, have been able to censor out 
uh, conservative voices, and one of the voices they censored out was mine. And so they did that uh, in a couple years ago. They did it last year. And 2022 had been smooth sailing so far, but then all of a sudden I get a announcement uh, on my email and it says, YouTube removed your content. And, and this is dealing with another program that I have, a separate channel. It says, uh, in the the name of the program, uh, some of you know, most of you know, is Christ and Culture. The program I'm on right now is is Christian Answers, but the other program is Christ and Culture. And so what they said was, we wanted to let you know that our team reviewed your content, and we think it violates our misinformation policy. So they're accusing me of peddling misinformation. They're accusing me of telling people false information, lies, untruths. They're accusing me of being a, a, a distributor of misinformation. They didn't say disinformation. Now, there's a difference kind of a technical difference between disinformation and inf- misinformation. Misinformation is information that's not true, but the person thinks it's true or may uh, think it's true. Disinformation is where the information is false, it is not true, but the person knows it's not true and still deliberately disseminates it. So they're not accusing me of disinformation. Uh, they don't even care whether I think it's true or not. So they're trying to be polite and say, well, you were, you were uh, violating our terms of service that says you cannot uh, put out misinformation. You were mistaken, which I certainly was not. We know that you may not have realized this was a violation of our policy, so we're not applying a strike to your channel. However, we removed the following content from your YouTube. And so the the title of the program was The Christian Worldview is a Minority Viewpoint Now. Uh, We realize this may be disappointing news, but it's our job to make sure that YouTube is a safe place for all. So they're saying that my content on Christ and culture, as a Christian pastor, I'm talking about cultural issues, They're saying that um, my information was threatening YouTube as a safe place. And really, that is such a bogus charge. Uh, I guess they have an idea of what a safe space looks like. And that safe space must be, in their mind, no information that contradicts their narrative. So if you say anything against the COVID-19 vaccine that makes people wonder about what the CDC says or Dr. Fauci says or challenges or questions anything that Dr. Fauci says or questions anything that the CDC was putting out, it's not a safe space for people because it's a misinformation or you're peddling false information. So what they're saying is you cannot question the our authorities. We have determined who is speaking the truth on whatever topic they're talking about. It could be the Hunter Biden laptop uh, theory or conspiracy. It could be the um, 2020 election results. It could be the COVID-19 vaccine. Whatever they have determined is true, then you're judged by their opinion of what is true. And if you say anything contrary to that, your video is taken down. Because why? You're disseminating misinformation according to them. Now, the question is, why are we using their opinion as the standard? Who appointed them judge and jury? Who appointed YouTube as the arbitrator of truth? Who, who is it that is making these decisions? 
you know, one uh, broadcaster was saying, well, he doesn't like it because some 25 year old living in his parents' basement, working for Google on his computer uh, from home is making these decisions of whose videos are true and not. And the question is who appointed this person the arbiter of truth? Well, Google did, YouTube did. And what right do they have to tell free citizens what they can talk about and what they can't talk about? So I was given um, a notice that my video was taken down. Well, this video was was made um, a while back. I had even forgotten about the video. So what was the video and what was why was it so dangerous and so much unsafe that they had to take it down? And why was it up for like a year or so? And all that time it was unsafe. And then all of a sudden somebody at Google, at, at YouTube decided that Pastor Jeff Short's commentary <clears throat> on the 2020 elections was so dangerous that they had to finally, at this point, take it down, ban it, erase it. You know, these are questions that you cannot ask. Believe me, you cannot ask them. Now, one of the things that they will give you the option of doing is disputing it. But you might as well forget about that. They say, we realize this may be disappointing, but it's our job to make sure that YouTube is a safe place for all. Um, no, it's not their job to arbitrarily decide what is true and what is false and then label everything that doesn't fit their narrative as false. That's not their job. Their job is to provide a forum and yes, screen out things that are illegal that are immoral, that are crimes, but let people talk, let people discuss, let people explore things. If Dr. Fauci makes a statement, let people be free to question what he's saying. Because if you want a free society, you've got to have people who talk about these things. If the CDC puts out information that doesn't seem right, we have to be able to discuss that and question that. And if we can't discuss and question that, we're not a free society anymore. So no, we don't need YouTube and Google deciding what is safe and what is not safe for people to hear. If you don't want to hear about a, a person's perspective on the 2020 election, don't click on their video and don't watch it. That's how adults operate. It says, if you think we've made a mistake, you can appeal this decision. That is really a joke. Believe me, I have appealed all of the times when they've removed a video. I appealed the time they removed the video for the COVID-19 vaccine discussion. I appealed when they removed a video before about the 2020 election. And believe me, it's a joke. You appeal it, you make an argument why you think your video should stay up. And then almost an hour later, you get a decision. We've reviewed it. It stands. You're banned. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, why did you decide what you decided? And what about my reasons for my video? Why did, are you going to answer them point by point? No, they're just going to, you're going to get a notice that'll say, uh, we've reviewed it and the decision stands. Your video is removed. No explanation. So you, a lot of times you may not even be dealing with a person. And then sometimes you may actually be dealing with a person who has a lot, a thousand other videos that he has to review. And he's just making snap decisions. Again, it could be somebody living in their parents' basement, a 23 year old. And he's been told whenever you hear the words, um, and I won't say them because they may even get this video banned, banned. But whenever you hear certain phrases, whenever you hear certain lines of thought, ban that video. And they're doing it. So you can appeal the decision. Yeah, you can appeal it, but what good will that do? It won't do it. And plus, if you appeal and you lose, then you get a strike. 
So why waste your time and why threaten your channel? Now here is more of the rationale that they're giving and it's really pretty bad. You'll find more details below. Con uh, what our policy says, content that advances false claims that widespread fraud, errors, and glitches change the outcome of the U.S. presidential election is not allowed on YouTube. So you cannot question any aspect of the 2020 presidential election at this point. YouTube considers all discussion, all questions about the 2020 election, illegitimate misinformation and unsafe for citizens of this country to hear. This is, this is totalitarianism. I should be able to talk about any subject I want unless it's something criminal, unless it's something illegal, immoral, if it's, if it's a direct threat to someone. For example, you can't talk about you know, threatens, threatening someone's life. You can't make threats on YouTube. That should, that's illegal. Um, you can't do something like defame someone. Uh, you can't, uh, you, you, there are certain things that are obviously crimes. We already have laws against, but to talk about the election, what did Hillary Clinton do for years and years and years after 2016 election? She talked about the Russian collusion hoax. And she talked about that nonstop. And so did the mainstream media nonstop. Were their videos taken down from YouTube? No, they weren't. They were questioning the 2016 election outright. And their videos were not taken down and they're still not taken down. So you can question the 2016 election, but you can't question the 2020 election. If you do your videos, are taken down from YouTube. That is censorship, that is totalitarianism, that is not a free society. And as Christians, we have to beware of this because we're going to be censored more and more and more and more because we have some moral values that are going to be tested. For example, we believe that marriage is exclusively between a man and a woman. We believe that. Here's the problem. The Supreme Court in 2015 declared from on high, a majority of Supreme Court justices declared that there was such a thing as so-called gay marriage. As Christians, we know that's false. There is no such thing as gay marriage. God defines what marriage is, and he says it's between a man and a woman. But our society, our Supreme Court has decided that it's going to play God and define marriage as could be a between a man and a man and a woman and a woman in addition to the real definition of marriage, which is a man and a woman. Okay, now that's the law right now. So if I as a pastor or we as Christians start talking about this subject and we say that we don't believe that a man and a man or a woman and a woman can actually be in a marriage because whatever that relationship is, it's not a marriage. It's a sinful relationship, according to the Bible, and that gay marriage does not exist in fact. It is a legal fiction that the Supreme Court came up with, just like they came up with this Roe v. Wade decision, which was overturned. The 2015 decision may be overturned. Okay, so I'm talking about marriage right now, but there may come a time when YouTube says, hey, you can't talk about marriage like that. You're spreading misinformation. 
because the law of the land says that two men or two women can get married and they can be married. And so if you say that they are not married or that they can't be married, you are spreading misinformation and you're creating unsafe place on YouTube because people are being persecuted and they're being made to feel unwelcome. And by talking about uh, marriage between a man and a woman only, you're excluding men and men and women and women in their relationship called marriage. And so you are, it's actually a form of hate speech and we're gonna remove your video. See, that's where we're headed in the future and we have to be aware of it. Now we have to make the decision. What will we do? Will we conform to the narrative that's being pushed by the big tech censors? Will we conform to the narrative being pushed by the mainstream media and liberal, progressive, democratic, radical, socialist leaning people? Are we going to uh, conform to the secularist, the pagan secularist, the anti-Christian secular humanist? Are we going to conform to that and stay on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? Are we going to conform? You know, the Bible talks about do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we are not to be conformed. We are to continue to have the conversations we feel are important to have. We're to have the discussions that we feel important to have. We're going to continue to talk about things, whatever they are. And if eventually in the future they pull every video that I ever make and they censor me and ban me for life and for all eternity, as far as I know, um, I'm to continue talking about them because I will not let, like the guy said, the broadcaster said, some 25, 23, 25, 26 year old living in his parents' basement working for Google censor control my free speech. And we also have a higher calling. We have a calling from God Almighty to be witnesses to the truth that he has given us in his word. And so government is not God. We do not spell God, G-O-V. We spell God, G-O-D. And God has given us a mandate. He said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel and to teach the truth of the Bible. And whether that truth conforms to the, quote, official narrative or whether it pleases the YouTube censorship department or whether YouTube thinks it's safe or unsafe um, should not really concern us that much. If they want to ban me from YouTube, then let them ban me from YouTube. If, but I will not conform to their pressure tactics and their bullying and their intimidation tactics to try to get me to change my message. No, I have a message from the Bible. I have a Christian worldview that looks at issues in culture and in life and everywhere and then comments on them. And I will not stop doing that. I don't care what they do. So I'm not gonna appeal this. They can take that video down and I'll make other videos and talk about other things that I think are important, but I will not be intimidated, and you shouldn't either. Well, I hope that's been a helpful commentary. We'll see you back next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.